Hello, and welcome to What If Natives Won, a video blog and channel about alternate history and American Indians, Native Americans, indigenous peoples. Uh, this first video is just an introduction. My name is Al Carroll. I'm Associate Professor of History at Northern Virginia Community College. I teach American, American Indian, and Latin American history. Uh, before that, I was a Fulbright Scholar in Indonesia, teaching the history of tribal peoples and minorities. Before that, I taught at San Antonio College and, and St. Philip's College. Uh, before that, I taught at Arizona State in the graduate program when I got my PhD. Before that, I got my master's at Purdue. I've written mostly about wars and veterans and human rights and genocide. My first book was Medicine Bags and Dog Tags, American Indian Veteran Traditions from Colonial Times to the Second Iraq War. My second book, was editing a collection of family histories from my students, survivors, family histories of surviving war, colonialism, and genocide. My third book was President's Body Counts, a look at the human rights records of American presidents. I also wrote an online blog, A Proposed New Constitution. I'm probably best known, especially online, uh, as one of the founders of a human rights group, New Age Frauds and Plastic Shamans, or NAPS, uh, and for more than 20 years, we've been protecting Native traditions against imposters, exploiters, theft, abuse, and commercialization. My next book will be Genocide Denial in America, about the seven genocides against indigenous people that took place in the United States that most people were never taught about. Most don't know, and many people do deny. Finally, I am also, together with Rob Schmidt of Blue Corn Comics, editing and put, putting out a short story collection, What If Natives Won? This is what this video blog and channel will be about. There's a huge lack of alternate history written about American Indians and indigenous people. The best known and most common alternate histories would be about two subjects, the American Civil War and World War II. So you think of Harry, Harry Turtledove's books, or The Man in the High Tower, or The Plot Against America, a lot, of, a lot of alternate history is very white-centered. It's often very Eurocentric and Anglo-centric. Some of the people it appeals to, some of them have some disturbing race fantasies, nostalgia for white supremacy and imperialism and colonial past. Now, some people just do like the Nazis because they make very good villains, but some others have some really disturbing fantasies about racial superiority. A lot of the Civil War fascination is nostalgia for slavery or denying that slavery was evil or harmful. Sometimes, some of them do come close to being really like militia types. Uh, they have a hatred of people from the North, or they like the idea of going to war against the U.S., and even the idea of killing American soldiers or people who, wor who work for the federal government. That kind of thinking is related to why there is so little alternate history about American Indians, indigenous peoples. Many people don't like to think about genocides in America. They are in denial. They likely were never taught about it. It's just too disturbing and depressing for many of them. It may remind them that their ancestors were foreign to this land and invaded, killed, cheated to get the land they now live on. So they want to deny these genocides ever happened. And it's not that different from if a German tries to deny the Holocaust or Turks deny Armenian genocide. Or they may want to believe that what happened was all or mostly an accident instead of deliberate, especially the claim that disease uh, was supposedly accidental. This is their way of feeling less guilty about benefiting from tragedy and atrocities. They also would often like to pretend that invasion, genocides, and land theft were inevitable, that it was always going to happen, that it was just the way things were done back then. Ironically, what they're doing is stereotyping whites. They're portraying their own ancestors as all of them evil, or evil back then as being normal. The historical truth is, one can find good people in any group of people, in any time, who often stood up and said, this is wrong, and tried to stop it. That is what this video blog and channel will be about. I've had great success using alternate history to teach my students, to get them interested and engaged, and show them that absolutely nothing in history was inevitable. It never had to be. The worst of human history is always a conscious choice. And how good or bad things turn out is based on how evil the evil choose to be. 
and how well and how strongly good people choose to stand up to them or stop them. The way things turned out in world history took a very specific set of circumstances, nothing inevitable about it. Sometimes history can turn on very small things, change even one, and you have an entirely different history, a different present, and a different society. And that is what we'll be talking about these next months. I plan on putting out a video about once a week and posting it both here and elsewhere. I'll talk about over two dozen alternate history scenarios, timelines, what-if questions, uh, and most of them will show up in the anthology that Rob and I are editing and putting out. I'll also be talking more about why there isn't more alternate history about not just natives, but also Pacific Islanders, Hawaiians, Samoans, Chamorros. I'll also review some of the few books and stories that do talk about indigenous alternate history. I do look forward to your comments and questions, and I will answer them as often as I can. If you can think of an alternate history related to indigenous peoples that I haven't thought of, I'd be very interested to see it. For example, I currently don't right now have any scenarios, any alternate history, about Australian Aboriginal people or Maoris. I do insist that discussion be civil and be informed. Racism of any, of any kind will get you deleted and banned. Genocide denial will get deleted. Ranting or childish behavior or personal attacks will get deleted. But I do recognize that some questions will be asked unintentionally in ignorance because much of the facts I point to are new to most people. They were never taught about this. They have been raised in denial, and denying indigenous genocide is taught in almost all public schools. These are the alternate history scenarios we will be talking about in future videos. Many of them will be in the short story collection, What If Natives Won? Look for it coming out in a few months. So, let's start off with the first one. What if others had colonized the Americas? What if Muslim traders from Spain or from the, the Ottoman Empire had colonized in the 900s? What if the Chola dynasty of India had colonized in the Americas at about that same time? What if the Vikings, who land in the 1000s, uh, what if they had kept coming in larger numbers and colonized much more of America? What if the Mali Empire had colonized in the 1300s? What if the Chinese Empire, led by Zhang He's fleet, had colonized in the 1420s? How would their conquest and invasion be different from what Europeans did? And the answer, as we're going to see, is that it would have been not as destructive as what Europeans did. Uh, that it would have been conquest but not genocides. Next one. What if all of Europe had been conquered? If all of Europe is conquered, the Americas are left alone for several hundred more years, and the technology will be that much more equal when the invasion finally happens. So what if the Muslim Caliphate had seized Constantinople in the year 717, and had then had gone on to conquer all of Europe? What if Ogade Khan had avoided being poisoned, and he continued the Mongol conquest in 1241. So in either case, native people, the Americas, would have been left alone for several more centuries. The next one. What if a leader in that first expedition from Europe had been focused on converting native people instead of conquering and enslaving and stealing as much gold as possible? Uh, if you had had someone very different from Las Cas uh, from Columbus, someone like Bartolome de Las Casas or Antonio Montesinos. Columbus, under this, is a frustrated would-be conqueror who probably is trapped over in Africa, uh, still part of the African slave trade. What if Aztecs had defeated Cortez? And what if the Aztecs adopt Spanish weapons from captured soldiers? This was actually two sci-fi books already, The Other Time and The Aztec Century, and I will be discussing and reviewing both of them uh, later on. What if the Incas had defeated Pizarro, and again, you had Spanish weapons adopted from the captured soldiers? 
What if a European power had seized Hawaii? What if Spain had seized it the first time Spanish explorers uh, come close to Hawaii back in 1542? What if Russia had seized Hawaii as it thought of doing in 1814? What if Britain had seized Hawaii as they considered doing in 1874? How would their seizure, how would their conquest uh, be different from the American takeover of Hawaii in the 1890s? What if Spanish colonies had, uh, in what is today the U.S., uh, what if those colonies had succeeded? There was an early colony, an early Spanish colony, in what became Georgia in 1526. There was another one in what became North Carolina in 1567. And there was another one. What if Spain's colonies, uh, attempted colonies, in what becomes part of the U.S., what if they had succeeded? Uh, there was an attempt to colonize in what is today Georgia, uh, by the Spaniards in 1526. There was another attempt in what became North, North Carolina in 1567. There was another attempt in what became Virginia in 1570. What if those colonies had succeeded? In the southern part of the U.S. is much like Latin America, and the northern part of what became the U.S. is still uh, much like what became the English colonies. And that means that there will be many more surviving native people in what is today the southern U.S. What if Jamestown or the Plymouth Colony had failed the same as Roanoke did? How were things different? What if Oliver Cromwell, what if Oliver Cromwell had made his Puritan military dictatorship of England permanent? How would natives have done under a Puritan state. What if Ben Franklin had successfully gotten more of the Iroquois model of government as part of the U.S. Constitution? And that would include, for example, women's rights, women voting. What if American colonists had lost against Britain? If that happens, the proclamation line, which protects native people, will continue. What if the new United States had accepted the Delaware Nation's proposal and granted American Indians the right to become the 14th state, and that state would have been in what is today Ohio? What if William Bowles had convinced the English to set up the nation of Muskogee in Florida and Alabama. And this will be a nation made up of Muskogees, Seminoles, runaway slaves, and those English who are still loyal to England, those colonists, the loyalists. What if the Lewis and Clark expedition had failed? Or what if it had disappeared entirely? What if the Prince Regent of Portugal and his court were captured by Napoleon during the invasion of Portugal? Brazil would not have a monarch to lead the independence. And that means that, that Brazil would have split into several nations, including an Amazon state made up mostly of indigenous people. What if Tecumseh's alliance had won? What if the Whigs had won the vote in Congress against Jackson and they halt the forced removal of the Cherokee and the Trail of Tears is prevented? What if Anglo-American invaders in Texas are defeated at the Battle of San Jacinto? The Texas Republic never exists and there is no ethnic cleansing of native peoples in Texas. What if the British Empire had annexed California and Texas as they proposed? There would have been no California Indian genocide. What if Prince Carl Solms Braunfels had led his planned uprising of German colonists allied to the Comanches against the Texas Republic? Related to that one, what if Karl Marx had moved to Texas 
as he planned. And from there he attempts the first communist revolution, recruiting German socialists and abolitionists, black slaves, Mexicans, and natives. What if the U.S. decides to annex all of Mexico and all of its people after the U.S.-Mexico War? What if after the War of the Costas, the Mayas had stayed if they had won and become an independent, recognized nation all the way until the present? What if the Mosquitos of Nicaragua what if they had stayed an independent and recognized nation in Central America? In World War II, what if the Navajo Code Talkers were never formed? The U.S. Marines will probably lose at Iwo Jima. Japan would take longer to defeat. What if Brazil's military dictatorship was prevented? Amazon Indian genocide will come to an end. What if Reagan is never elected, or if he had died from the assassination attempt against him in 1981? How will this affect Latin America's native peoples? How will this affect genocide against Mayas in Guatemala? How will this affect the Salvadoran Civil War? How will this affect contra-terrorism in Nicaragua? What if Peru's dictator, Alberto Fujimori, was never elected, or if he had been thrown out of office earlier. There would have been no forced sterilization of Peru's Indians. And finally, what if to distract from their own failures, George W. Bush or Donald Trump had launched either air attacks or an all-out war against Bolivia or Venezuela? We'll be talking about all of these what-if questions, all of these alternate histories uh, in the coming months. And I hope to see you there. Uh, feel free to comment. Uh, feel free to like and share. I will see you soon. Bye.